Hello, everybody, and welcome to New York Talk. This is the Rotherham United podcast. As promised, we have a very special episode for you. We have the Rotherham's number one, Victor Hansen, join us. Thank you for joining us, Victor. Thank you very much for inviting me as well. I enjoyed to be here. Uh, first question, I suppose, is your surname. Is it Johansson or Johansson? It's one of them. I got this question actually yesterday from Toddy as well. Uh, so in Sweden, we say you want some. Oh, so it's oh. however you want to pronounce it from that. <laughs> so neither of you. I said that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it is very uh, Swedish though, so it's hard to uh, it's hard to say really anything. <laughs> um, and for me listening, for me, my here, Mick. Hello, Mick. Uh, hello. Hello, Danny. Hello, everybody. And Ben's back with us. Hello, Benjamin. Hello. I'm going to change this. I can't see everybody. I like to see everybody. It's a screen. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we don't want to look at you, Victor. I just can't see everybody uh. else. That's all. <laughs> um, so thank you for doing this, Victor. We do, we do really appreciate it. I'm, I'm sure the fans will as well. It's, uh, thank you. No, of course. It's always fun. It's always fun. Um, so we're going to go through the fan questions. We've asked fans to produce loads of questions and they've delivered. Uh, so we're going to do the fan <laughs> questions as sort of the, the tree of this, the Christmas tree of this, and we'll have the decorations on the side of it. There's some extra questions. Uh, although I am going to start with my question, um, which is following on from Richard Wood podcast. Um, Victor, do you have any tricks or special skills <laughs> or party <laughs> tricks or anything like that? <laughs> you know, I don't think I have, you know. I, uh, it's hard to say, but nothing like Woody. He's just a special man, and he says, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, "Oh, that's a disappointment." Can, uh, yeah, I'll see if, if I can think of something. It might just pop up, but nothing. Yeah, nothing yeah. out of the box, like. <laughs> um, Have you ever thought of career in journalism, one? Matt? With uh, with questions like that. Why not? You know, I mean, they're searching <laughs> questions. And it's, yeah. I'll say we're taking my place at uni soon. <laughs> yeah. It's always, uh, uh, apparently, it's always best to start with the best, the most important question. And that's obviously the most important question. So, well, what did Woody yeah. say? I, I missed that one. What did he say that he can do? Woody, Woody. Woody did a card trick. Uh, cause, did he? Yeah, because everybody knows him as the magic man with the magic hat. We asked him if he knew a magic oh, trick. Yeah. <laughs> did he know a magic trick? <laughs> 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 and he just, send, he just sends his lad off to get him a pack of cards and he's like shows us his trick and it's like right okay then fair enough <laughs> <laughs> um continue on a similar vein uh chris rufc on twitter asks his first question is what product do you use on your beard if any <laughs> i'm listening now i'm listening <laughs> oh this is hard so i used the beard ball from l'oreal uh, conditioner shampoo with the same brand. And then I went to this barber the other day. Uh, and she gave me, um, oh, I don't know what it was, but some certain oil that I use now. It, oh, it smells lovely. So that's why uh, <laughs> that's my go to that now. I can't remember what it's called though, so I need to, um, I need yeah. to uh, look that up. Yeah, Chris, Chris wants to know, so I feel like it's normal. Yeah. Like Chris uh, L'Oreal. L'Oreal is the best one. Absolutely. <laughs> Right, I'll make a note of that. Um, <laughs> you haven't got a beard. You need to grow one first. Well, this, this is the thing. I've said this since the start of the season. When um, Josh Chapman signed, I went, this is this is really, really annoying me. All three goalkeepers have better facial hair than me and they're all more or less my age. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was like, oh, just, just sad, Danny, you know. But anyway, I'll make a note of that. To be fair, Mick's 50 summer and he still can't grow a beard, so don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, dear, mate. Not a prayer. <laughs> um, still from Chris again, but more um, a bit different question. Uh, he wants to know what age did you come to England and what sort of led your led you what led you to England? So I, I went there when I was 15. I moved to uh, Villas Academy. Um, so luckily I got scouted when I was a bit younger. Uh, I managed to get a move there. But then I, I struggled living away from home it was tough mm. every day I think I cried for three months straight just bang on couldn't stop crying mm. and then uh, I broke my back uh, so I managed to go back home for like a year I think and just do my rehab there uh, so that was it was unfortunate that I broke my back but it was fortunate for me to get home and then reload and then go again mm. but it was, it was tough don't get me wrong it was tough 
Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately is a strong word breaking your back. <laughs> I'm yeah. underplaying that a bit. <laughs> I also break. It's like one of them stress fractures. I think like yeah. certain people can get away with it, but I couldn't because I'm, I play football, so I had to do something. I couldn't play without. Hmm. It's got to be it tough living in a different sounds, country like. as well. Oh yeah, it's yeah. Be- I didn't know that yeah. much English then as well. So yeah. it's just you know, I was horrible. Yeah. Well, you get used yeah. to it. You get used to it though. It's more mm. like. Coming into a different team, you know, they know how oh, he's from Sweden, he wants my place. And then he's like, don't have any friends. I stay with a Finnish guy named Jonas. And we had a great time, to be fair to him. Like, we uh, got on really well. So that was my saviour, I think. <laughs> Finnish hero. <laughs> <laughs> and then on to Leicester, how did the move come to, to Leicester? Where, when did you move to Leicester uh, from there? So I moved 2018. Hmm. So basically, my old coach from Villa went to Leicester, Ben Petty, uh, and he just took me straight away once uh, I left Villa. Fair enough. Hmm. Um, yeah, moving on to Sam Hadfield. Well, this is a question we got asked from a lot of people, to be honest. Sam Hadfield, uh, Lewis. <laughs> um, I don't know how much you can say to this, but it's about your contract ending in the summer. Um, Lewis M.A. asks if you'll sign a lifetime contract. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what, where, where, as things stand now, what, nearly Christmas time, what, where, where does your contract situation stand? To be honest, I, I don't even know 100%. Uh, <laughs> but I like it here. The club, the club knows I like it here and I like it here. And hopefully they like me here as well. So I just had to wait and see what's happening, really. But that's where we stand, really. And on on the club, the signing from Leicester to Rotherham, how did that come about? Because we were we had well, we had no keepers, zero keepers at the start of last season. Um, yeah. How good that? <laughs> <laughs> no, to be honest, I didn't even know how that started. Really, I just heard from my agent that Rotherham was interested. Spoke mm. a bit to Iverson as well because uh, I was with him mm. at Leicester at the time. Um, but nothing more than that. Then went back home for Sweden, uh, stayed there for a few months or two months, I think it was. And then, yeah, I, they said, come and have a trial if you want. And I went straight away. Uh, packed my bags and then went. <laughs> and I stayed. <laughs> I didn't have any clothes. Yeah. It was hilarious. Stayed in the hotel for, I think, six six weeks. Due to Corona, I couldn't go back and get my bags. Mm. So I had probably six pair of underwear and a few clothes. I had to go <laughs> once every week to find some new clothes. No washing machine. Couldn't take them to the washing place. Hotel oh, wouldn't wash God. my clothes. I stood there in my sink, just washed everything. <laughs> so <laughs> oh. The glamorous life of a footballer. Oh, it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times I was. Right. <laughs> right, it worked out really well, so I can't complain. I mean, it was a good experience, that. Well, you say you're back in Sweden. Was it a big. Was it a risk to come back and just spend a few weeks in a hotel? Was it a massive risk, or did you see it as sort of a little bit of a free hit to come for a trial? No, a free hit. I wanted to stay in England. That was what I wanted, wanted to do. Like I had some other clubs in Scandinavia and some other places, but I wanted wanted to go back. And then when mm-hmm. Brother and called, I just knew I wanted to go away. Like, but great things to my Iverson, Iverson as well. Mm. So yeah. We've got some decent, had some deep, decent keepers at Leicester, aren't they? To be fair, you, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just said, obviously, Casper there at, at first team, yeah, uh, Danny Ward, Eldon yeah, Paul, Ward, was, yeah. so it was, yeah. uh, was a good, uh, good setup, very good mm. setup. Le- learned loads, loads. Mm. And when you sign for a club, I, I am always interested with the transfer dealings. Are you sort of thinking, right, I'm not going to be number one necessarily straight away, or is your mindset? I'm going there. I, I'm going to get number one shirt. I want to be the guy that starts every week. What, what, what's it like coming into that? No, the club told me straight away, you're not going to be the first choice. Hmm. Uh, so I knew that, but that's always your aim to be the first choice. You just have to work harder. You know, first in, last out. Um, just keep working. Because you know the chance going to come. Hmm. The chance is always going to be there. It could take 40 games. It could take 10 games, two games. You just have to, um, you know, Step up when you need to, really. Mm. Yeah. And you stepped up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, big time. <laughs> Cheers. 
Um, Bailey Vernon on Twitter also asks, uh, which goalkeeper have you looked up to the most? Have you, have you always been a goalkeeper and you're coming up through through playing football? Has that always been your position? Yeah. Not really. So when we played seven aside, five aside and seven aside in Sweden, my dad put me as like a centre half and a striker. Because mm. he was a goalkeeper as well at the time. Well, he wanted me to, to know how they think about the game. You know, how a mm. centre half think, how a striker would think. And I think that helped me massively, to be honest. Uh, so then we start when I was probably I've always been a goalkeeper you know you switch young ages you switch don't you mm. so centre off one game and then goalkeeper striker centre off keeper uh, then when I was probably 10 I, I, I just stayed in that position uh, and that's probably who I looked up to the most as well my dad because I went every training every game I was there just watching didn't watch loads of football at back then either so that's always been my, like my uh, my hero uh, is there any, so you, when you sort of settled down as a kid, was there, was there anybody else? And you're growing up when you moved to England 15 so years old. Was there any sort of standout keepers at the time you like not modelled on but looked up to? Yeah, I was like Schmeichel when he played. Yeah. I've liked uh, Victor Valdez as well mm. when he played. Mm. I watched a bit of that. She's probably the same height as me as well. Mm. Um, and how he works. And you know, so I've always looked up to them a bit. Mm. Um, so let's talk about you getting your chance last season. It sort of, from a fan perspective, it came sort of out of nowhere. Uh, just again, just a random game in what, November when it was. <laughs> I think, oh, yeah. you're starting a game. How did that come about for you? Just the, was it just tap on the shoulder, you're up or? Yeah, basically, I think Jama had some problems with his foot. I think it was. Right. Mm. And on the Thursday, Gaffer told me that I was probably starting on Saturday, and I. Uh, I've never been the nervous in my life, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I couldn't sleep for days, for two days. <laughs> uh, but you always know, once the referee blows the whistle, it's just, you're sweet, you're fine. It's just the lead up to the game. I think no fans helped me that year as well. Because mm. oh, it would have been a big step up, like, for playing in front of 200 to playing in front of a full New York. Like, yeah. So I think that helped. I think that helped. Yeah. Yeah. You certainly announced yourself in that game, didn't you? Pardon, Mick? Sorry. I say that you certainly announced yourself in that game. Kind of on the run-up to that, Jamal had, had, had kind of had a bit of a... He seemed to be lacking in a little bit of confidence at that time. And I don't know whether... Because he'd obviously had that bad injury the year before. Um, and from a fan's perspective, he, he looked a little bit sort of down on his confidence, really. And then you came in, and it was like just totally the opposite. It just you just appeared to be full of confidence. You know, you commanded an area, you commanded the back four, back five, and it was like, "Whoa, what's happening here?" Because <laughs> we've not seen that all season. Um, so you certainly, from a fan's point of view, certainly you, you definitely announced yourself, announced yourself unseen. Oh, cheers, mate! Appreciate that. No, it's like it said. I think. Oh, to be fair, it helped, you know, last year as well, to look up to Jamma, look up, you know, working with Andy as well. I mean, it helped loads. And when Josh came in as well, uh, you know, loads of experience between them three. And you just have to go in and be fearless, don't you? Really. Mm. I mean, that's that's who I am. That's who I am as a person. Just want to leave it all out there. Mm. Yeah. On, on that, the goalkeeping situation at every club, again, fascinates me. Because... I know goalkeepers don't, don't always go from their own, but you are effectively like, goalkeeping trains are so different. So you're training with effectively four people. You, you, what you, the three, three keepers plus Andy Warrington. But you're all trained together, but you are all going against each other for the same spot. It's, oh, it seems a strange dynamic that you are. Teaming, I know, yeah. But you want to be the better <laughs> one of them. It seems strange from the outside. It's how strange is it from the inside? Oh, it's strange. It, it's strange at the beginning. Mm. You know, once you start learning, but now it's like if Josh in goal, I support him 100%. If I'm in goal, he supports me 100%. Yeah, uh, you know, he's the first one to give me a hug after the game, and I'm probably the same for him as well. You know, because we want it, we want well for the team. And that's you know, some teams doesn't have that, some teams have selfish mm. goalkeepers who just want to play and don't give a fuck, really. Sorry about the language, but yeah, basically, that's how <laughs> true. Uh, but here is different, it's different, even mm. you know. So, yeah, we support each other. I think that's a massive thing. Mm. 
Yeah, and that I mentioned earlier about before we start recording uh, about the goalkeepers' union, where goalkeepers always seem to back each other up from other clubs. <laughs> is that is that is that a thing, George? When you watch other keepers, they make a mistake. You're always backing them up a bit. Yeah, I always blame the centre half. Would you say that? Like, <laughs> on, yeah, I always blame the centre half. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's just for right. bands as well, because they get wind up. I think they get more wind up than us. <laughs> so that's just uh, how it works. Yeah. Uh, another one, William Morris on Twitter. Uh, currently in English football, but I widen that to world football. We talked about who, which keepers you looked to previously. Who in world football, from a goalkeeping point of view, is is a, is a bit of a standout right now? Yeah, I'd say Martinez in Villa. I think he's mm. you know from being his position in Arsenal, then just come there and you know smoked it basically. I think he's outstanding. Yeah. Very, very good yeah. keeper. Former Miller former, as well. Yeah, former Rotherham keeper yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we claim on for anything we can. Anything, anything good we can. <laughs> We're claiming that. <laughs> uh, another question I thought of earlier, but I haven't written down in the centre, is from the Sweden international point of view, how, what is, do you ever think, right, you know, in a year or two's time, if I can get in the championship, play higher? Is that a route you think you might be able to go down for potentially in, in the international setup for Sweden? I mean, that's the dream to play international, but it's nothing I'm thinking about. You know, I just want to do well for my team. That's yeah. that's my worries. If I don't do well for the team, I'm not gonna get there anyway. <laughs> so I just focus on myself yeah. and focus on the team. That's that's just no thought whatsoever about that. When that day comes, it'll be a good day if it comes. Mm. Other than that, it's just I want to do well here. Hmm. Um, so the next question I'm going to let Mick ask ask the question oh, no, here and we then go. I will rephrase it in a way that won't potentially get you in trouble <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to ask the question, the same question that I asked Woody because I, I got my, my, my wrist slapped for asking it so all I will say is that the, the question is quite simple Barnsley away last year yeah that's it. That's it. I, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I don't want to can't, say it anymore. I can't say anymore either. Yeah, fine. <laughs> well, that answers the yeah. question perfectly. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's becoming a running theme. This making. Um, and, and yeah, it's not my favourite person. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, Victor. I, I and, and and it's because of that. And it, I have a, I have a dig regularly at referees and 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 not necessarily about bad performances because everybody has a bad performance and we all understand that. But 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 things incidents like that from a fan's point of view are incredibly frustrating. At, yeah. From a player from a player's point of view, how 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 easy or otherwise is it to deal with that sort of frustration initially in the face of the referee or the person making those decisions? And then subsequently after the game, how, how is it? How, is it so easy? Because I'm not over it yet, man. No, nah. <laughs> nah, nah. it's not. It's not easy. You'll always remember it. There's no getting away from that. Uh, yeah. But I think you turn it into the sort of you turn it to the positive and say it gives you extra fire, doesn't it? It gives you that extra yeah. motivation to to work even harder and do things right. Because you can't get involved. Yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's the thing. You you just ruin it for everyone. Because once you yeah, get involved, yeah. it would just get worse and worse and worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, I suppose it's all negative as well. It's negative, negative emotions, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. But um, so, so, so as you as you sort of warming up against Ipswich on the bench, yeah. <laughs> at that point, yeah. you think, oh no, not again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got a text from my, uh, I, I got a text from my dad actually earlier that day. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was just laughing. Basically, you have yeah. to. To be fair to him, though, he, he came before. He told Hammer that you're keeping the service apology. Uh, and then when the game started, I said, "Hopefully, no boots in the face today." And then laughed, and then just <laughs> went away. Yeah. And he did laugh as well. So I think you know, you, you can't yeah. hold a grudge towards him. I know he he was wrong, and he, he said it was wrong. Uh, <laughs> fair play to him. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. That's all you can there ask you really. can bury the hatchet now, can't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'll cut him a bit of slack next time. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> no, I won't. Right. No, I won't. <laughs> yeah. Um, talking of that, 
we had another question and I can't find who asked it. Which hurts which hurt more? The Preston game, the Barnsley game, or Cambridge at the weekend? Oh, it's Preston game, I think. Mm. Preston game quite easily. Because that was that was so late as well, so I had time to see the boot is coming in and I knew it was gonna be painful and it was quite painful. But then it makes you feel alive as well, so you kinda of like it, but then <laughs> so it's a bit weird. You know, it's, it's nothing better when you stand in the shower after the game and it's so sore. Like you don't want to get water on it. You just stand it just oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I, mean, I, don't... I know it is weird. I, I, I don't know where it comes from. I just like it. I just, it's, it's weird. It's this idea that goalkeepers have to be a bit mad to be a, be a goalkeeper. What you just describe it right in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are your ribs anyway after Saturday? Are they all right now? <laughs> Say again. Sorry, mate. I didn't hear. How are your ribs after Saturday? Are they all right now? Or are you still yeah, I, I, it's, it's, it's painful still. I don't know what it is. It's bruised. I can't really lay on it. But it will be fine. Just it will be fine. Just bruised. Uh, relegation last season. You obviously because of the Barnsley incident. You obviously missed the last whatever it were four or five games. Still involved with the squad. We talked to Woody about it. That Cardiff game, as from a fan point of view, we know it ripped the gut right from within us. How was that? Because you're you're not involved. You had to sit on the sideline and watch it almost as a fan. How was that game and the aftermath of that? Oh, it was horrible. No, it, it, the game itself was good. Mm. You know, I mean, we actually played decent. Uh, yeah. But when that goal went in, oh, it just dropped. Everything dropped. It's the worst feeling I've ever had on a, on a pitch or on the sidelines. Because we knew we knew that if we were going to win, we are going to stay up. Mm. So I was, oh, it was painful. Very painful. Mm. But, but then yeah. again, just to, just to follow that up from... Um... From my end, do you think that's added a different sort of fire into everybody this season? You know, you were so we were all so close to staying up that season. Do you think that's transferred into this season? Because you know, we don't go twenty-one games unbeaten in all competitions by mistake. You know, so do you think that fire from last season and missing it by so little is transferred into this season? And now, you know, we're up the top end. Yeah, definitely. I think so. I think, especially. Every game matters. I think that mm. proved a different sort of it proves a point on it that mm. one one away somewhere where we could have been two one, three one actually matters them two points or to get that one point extra. Uh, so I think that's sort of mentality that we have that we you wanna come away with something. You know, if we don't win, don't lose, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And last season on last season again, the COVID two COVID outbreaks were the real killers. Um, I know this is very easy to say, but without those, how close do you think we would have been survival to survive to stay out last year? Last year, theoretically, obviously, Oof, uh, it's hard to say. Um, close, very close. <laughs> 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 I, close much much close, so, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's hard to say. You know, it could have gone either way, you just don't know. Mm. Uh, but that's sort of the beauty of it as well that we might have mm. been in it properly, or we might have. You know, fell off, and I think everything, everything has a point, everything has a reason, and I think you know, now with the fans back in as well, you just want to crack on this season now and and keep going. Yeah, but on on the fans back in, um, the preseason games and the first day, first league game of this season. Again, we talked about it, Woody, but from a fan point of view, it was one of the most special days of being a Rotherham fan back in that stadium with basically a full house. Um, for you, for the first professional game with a full house, uh, how how was that for, the, for your first proper game? I say proper oh, game, brilliant! Game Goosebumps! Fans. I was goosebumps. I was just the whole day. It was brilliant. You know, I can't really. I don't have any words to describe it really. I told, I think I told Woody after that game as well, and I understand how tough it was for you last year. You know, to have that boost every game with the fans in, and then don't have any fans in at all. For me, it wasn't that much mm. of a difference, but for them, it could actually, you know, it gives the extra few percent, and you can't do it without the fans. Um, two, three extra percent, or ten extra percent, whatever. Mm. So. Yeah, it was great, yeah. Very amazing day. Yeah. Um, 
your popularity with the fans seems to know no ends. You've even got a hat. You're old. <laughs> <your own> <laughs> where, where, where did that go? Was that a club thing or did you have any part of that? Did that no, I didn't have any part of it. I woke up one day and it, I think, I don't know if Andy or Amy told me that. a oh, lovely hat. And then I just seen it. <laughs> so or even it, it might have been Toddy actually. Sam Todd who told me. But, no, I've got a question blues. about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got a fan's question about the hat. I go on. Um, uh, uh, this, this, fan, this fan's question comes from um, somebody called Alison Barlazer, who says, can she have a hat, please? <laughs> I know, I promise. I spoke to Dan after the game against Cambridge. I've seen it then. I said, I'm going to sort a hat out. <laughs> thing is, I, I don't know where the shop has sold out, haven't they? I think yeah. again. So I need to... <laughs> My dad took three home. Didn't say anything. Just took them, so. <laughs> Don't have anything in my house. <laughs> so I need to sort something. I should be very disappointed if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I would. I would have to sort that. I'm still fully <laughs> expecting uh, Gillingham's full away ends to all have the Viking hats on. You know, in 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 the end of April heat, we all just have the big woolly hats on. <laughs> you know, it, it, just imagine that. That'd be spectacular. Oh, that'd be, uh, quite warm as well, that once. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> uh, that'd be good, that. Yeah. Quick, someone um, someone tell Toddy, write it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bet they made a load of money off that. Bit, do you see any of that money? Is that all <laughs> clubbing? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> When you get a new contract, you, like, new contract you get a percentage of sales. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I bought 10 ads already, to be honest. I just, just <laughs> sent them everywhere. So. <laughs> That's where they sold out, then, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, probably me, yeah. <laughs> uh, a couple more questions. Uh, Cal, RUC on Twitter. Do you have a best mate in the squad? Oh, uh, again, a lot of times with the goalkeeping stuff. Is it a goalkeeper or is it anybody else? It's a tough question. No, I think I, I get on with everyone. You know, I hang out, grab it with Dan. Uh, his missus and my missus get on well as well uh, we play quite a bit of golf together uh, then Angus and Sads as well uh, yeah. but really anyone in the team get along with anyone everyone gets along with everyone so mm. just, it seems a good group it always wasn't the Paul Wall yeah, but it seems a good group of players who all seem to get on with each other yeah oh yeah it's, it's, it's a great great changing room or dressing room I would say so uh, very good uh, I've got to ask about Paul Warren, the manager, the gaffer, whatever, I don't know where you refer to him. Uh, what's he like? Because again, fan favourite, absolute legend of the club. Uh, he seems like a great guy, he seems like a good person. Um, what's he like to play under? Oh yeah, very good. Very good gaffer. Like He's he's a good person, I understand. He's a family-based person. Mm. I think everyone at the club has the same sort of values that he has. I think that's the success. He, he gets on with everyone as well. Mm. Oh. Yeah. yeah, very he has, good. So he has over the other, yeah, we are absolutely. He has come in for some criticism from some fans, you know, sort of the back end of last season and and, and the beginning mm. of this when uh, when things didn't get off to the absolute flying start that some people wanted. Uh, you know, the, 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 it, there has been some sort of some criticism on social media of him because of because of exactly what you've just said there about his, you know, this sort of good human being. Um, quote of his, um, and, and it, I mean it's clear, it's clear to everybody who actually thinks about it that from from the way that the squad behave, the way that the squad interact together, the way that they play, that 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 is a massive part of of, of the culture of the club. Or it certainly looks that looks it from the outside. Um, I, I, we were we were quite critical of these people, weren't we? Because it was <laughs> kind of well, I was. You know, because I mean, it's just, it's just, they're just stupid comments, but um, I, I don't really know where I'm going with this. I think oh, I, I, we, we, <laughs> I, 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 I kind of talked myself into a corner there, and I'm just, I'm just trying to praise Warney because as, as supporters, it, it's clear to, clear to us all now that, you know, what he's created at this club is just something that we've never, ever seen as Rodney United fans over the years. Um, and, and when you look at other clubs, you don't, Obviously, we're all looking in from the outside, but we don't seem to see it there either. It seems quite a unique place, I think, is what I'm, what I'm trying to say. We got there in yeah. the end. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I'll, I'll just, what I'll do is I'll mute my mic, keep talking, and then when I get to the point, I'll unmute myself. <laughs> How will you know if you've got there, though? Oh, I have no idea, mate. I don't know. I'm old now. <laughs> yeah. I assume you've not listened to any of these episodes before, Victor, but this is exactly what it's like. Mick rambles on for two or three minutes, and then we have a conversation. <laughs> oh, it's pretty Sorry. Hard. <laughs> I'll show um, you that. Charlie Hawks on Twitter. Oh, Mick, was there a question? Do we get a question out of you, Mick? No. Okay. No, it was just nonsense. It was just nonsense. Sorry. All right. Charlie Hawks again on Twitter. Uh, he'd like to know your best and worst moment so far for Oldham United. Oh, the best is to double against Wednesday. Yes. Easy. Correct answer. <laughs> the way, you know, the, especially the way how it ended. Mm. Uh, the worst... Yeah, it's, it's Cardiff away and then Sheffield Wednesday this year. So mm. that's probably um, stopping it. Uh, yeah. Cardiff is the worst, but then the, the mistake against Wednesday is just it's, it's the wrong, it's the wrong day, it's the wrong game that I'm mistaken. Mm. So yeah, that's... and it's another goalkeeping thing that if you yeah. make a mistake, that's it. You know what I mean? We're, we're in trouble. Yeah. If, if Smithy misses a chance, it's all right. I'll get another one, but. If you make a mistake, we're in deep trouble. Yeah, no, it is. And that's that's why you want to be a goalkeeper as well, because you have that sort of, you know, uh, what do you say? Not powers. You have that sort of, um, I can't find a word for it. The balance. It's the balance, isn't it? Mm. Uh, I mean, the, the responsibility, especially responsibility for the yeah. team. Um, sometimes it's, mistakes going to happen. Don't get me wrong. You can't be perfect. Mm. We know that, but it's, it's hard. Want to do a mistake? It's hard. It's hard to sleep for a few days. You know, you're miserable. Um, you're trying to forget about it, but then in the dream, it happens again. Schmack. <laughs> then you're back on the same pace, and it's horrible. It is horrible. Um, and my missus got to share a deal of that as well. Because uh, I'd, I'd hate if she was like me. I probably would have break up straight away. I was just miserable. Oh, I was so miserable. <laughs> But she knows it now. That I need I need three four days and then I'm calm again. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, on the positive, let's talk about that Wednesday game. Uh, the one, the good one, the last one last year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Freddie goal was brilliant. But let's talk about talk talk me through how it went down from your point of view because we had a cut. They had a corner. I know. Yeah. View, how, how did uh, it all go down from there? Nah, they got a corner. I thought, no, don't score it. Don't score it. And then we broke, and I, I, I told ref to blow the whistle. That's kind of just full time. And then I see him go. I see Crooksy go, I think it was. Mm. It's like, oh, it was just brilliant. Yeah. Seeing the, the ball just heading towards the net. And when I see that, I think I've never sprinted that far that far, that quick in my life. <laughs> I, I was <laughs> I was flying, mate. It's like, um, <laughs> I was just brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> I think yeah, it was the, the, the commentary the, from John Brecken as well. Just on the end of the dog pile. That was brilliant. That. Oh, Brecken's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I think. When I was, when I was 10 years old, I knew I was a goalkeeper. Not a very good one, but I was a goalkeeper. And one of the things I didn't like about being a goalkeeper was not being involved in those moments. So I ended up being even worse. <laughs> so yeah. is that why you just, goals like that just. Yeah, I hate that. That's what yeah, especially last year because there was no fans. So you couldn't, you just mm. stood there. And everyone thought you looked mm. stupid just standing there, you know, <laughs> running around in front of the box, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> I thought it was time I to join in. I thought it was the right moment to do it as well. It's a long sprint. Yeah, you get definitely. tired once you get back. Like it's, it's a hundred kilometers up and then hundred kilometers back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way back you can go slowly though, can't you? You can just have a nice stroll on way back. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get back, you off. <laughs> can't cut from there. <laughs> I suppose right, with um, <clears throat> yeah, with the fact with the fans being in, I suppose you've actually got that celebration element. Just to turn around and celebrate with the fans. Uh, I don't know if you've looked at our YouTube channel, but I do like match day blood fogs and experience. And every time we get a goal in front of the South Stand, every time it's as if you look dead in the camera and celebrate <laughs> with us. I don't know if it's intentional, but I tell you what, mate, it is fantastic content. When we score, and you just spin round and you celebrate with us. It's fantastic. It's absolutely I fantastic. See that. That's brilliant. That. 
No, yeah, I just I tried to lock onto someone. I tried to find someone who's looking at me, and then I look back at him, and we just stare at each other for five seconds. That's how it normally <laughs> goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm on the front row as well, so you know. Oh right, yeah, you're in danger. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, keep an eye out for <clears throat> some straggly beard and a flat cap. It's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we got another question off the line blog. Uh, they'd like to know the most difficult player you've played against whilst at Rotherham. Well, goalkeeper, I'm not sure how easy it is. It's hard. To no, I was, I was, I've seen the question earlier and I thought it's, it's hard to say because mm. you know, anyone can be a if you score, you're a good player, you think. Or you do know what I mean? Like, it's hard, it's not like a center off has to deal with someone for 90 minutes. Mm. Um, so it's, it's very hard to say. Um, I, I couldn't I can even come up with a name. To, to, to Victor, if you want. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's clearly, obviously, Gavin Ward, isn't it? I mean, he's obviously the most difficult <laughs> player of the Bergens. <laughs> I thought you were letting this go. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought, oh, yeah, you're right. I were, went up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's... I, I, it's hard. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Um, Danny Smith uh, 97 similar vein uh, who are the best and worst teams you've played so far now I won't ask you who the worst is because when we play them next time round they'll have it pinned up on the dressing room wall so I'll just say who's the best team <laughs> so far best team so far uh, I thought Wigan did very well we played against them Charlton as well second half mm. did very well uh, but it's, it's like one of them when we play at our best we have, we have a very good team yeah uh, so it's, it's like I said, it's more it's easier when you see the game than actually playing the game because you like living in the emotion. Um, so what do you think? What do you guys think? The best best team? So uh, it is to go on, Ben. I, I, want, I, want, I want Ben to answer this one. I think <laughs> I want Ben to answer I, this one. I, I haven't I heard about Cambridge. Were all right. I thought Cambridge. Yeah, were all were, right. yeah. Cambridge were good. Yeah. Cambridge were all right. Brad on the league table oh. so says. I agree with Definitely. that. I thought Wednesday were all right when we played them, but they can't. Nah, no, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> cool. Hang on a minute. Whoa. We've no. gone downhill. I thought they were all right. <laughs> they were lucky. <laughs> exactly. That's how the penalty goes in, Ben. It's a different game. Yeah, but it, 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 but it didn't. Have, but whatever. <laughs> I can't believe Ben's piped up. The only time he's piped up with negativity. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be fair though, Ben's not seen many games because he's a London boy now, isn't he? So he's not seen as many games as the rest of us. So, um, uh, but there's still no excuse for that, Ben. No, no, oh. I'm sorry, mate, but whatever. I thought I thought a good answer. <laughs> well, you've been proved wrong. <laughs> it's all that egg ball business in the capital, it's changed you. Yeah, ben, NFL boy. <laughs> Uh, I agree, Charlton. Charlton were the you could tell that they were a good team that were doing badly, and then new managers come in. I thought we were we we're almost looking to get out with a point down there, weren't we? In end, mm. yeah, Josh did some good saves, didn't they? Very good mm. saves, mm. yeah, he did. Uh, Mick, that's it. We played Burton for me. I thought Burton were excellent. Yeah. Mm. Um. I, th- I think next season they're going to be uh, they're going to be uh, assuming that they continue to 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 improve from where they are now. I think they're going to be a damn good side next year um, because I mean, he's a good manager. Like we said in the the post match uh, podcast, you know it, we know that Jimmy Floyd Asselbank's a really good manager. Uh, he's nobody's fool. He's very very experienced, and and you could tell from the way that they played. Um, and I think they'll be a decent side next year. So for me, I thought Burton probably. About the best ones we've played. Yeah, fair enough. Danny, did you say one? Um, I'll go for Charlton overall quality, but in terms of how they played football against us, I'd say Cambridge away. You know, they were very, uh, they're very, they very, they came at us and pressed us. You know, and even though we've already played them once before, it's it's one of them games where you don't expect them to press. You know, they expect. I know that I'm sounding a bit um, big headed here, but you expect them to sort of stop the attack rather than attack themselves uh, and for them to press us as well as they did you know you can all you can say is fair play to them and you know <clears throat> like victor said for them to be 16th or whatever they are i don't think they'll be around there at the end of the season if they keep playing like they are mm. no, i agree 
I like how none of us said Fleetwood, even though it was our biggest loss of the season. <laughs> we'll, we'll that very well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, let's just forget about Fleetwood. Never happened, uh. did it? Never happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're in the middle of a 21 game beaten run, and you've been there for part of it, played for, played for part of it, played for some of it. Uh, what's it like playing in that run, every going into every game? Because as a fan, I always imagined these times when you see Man City go ridiculous amount of games and beat, you think, oh, that must be amazing. And then when you're in it, it's just more pressure. <laughs> it could be like if you lose, it's going to yeah. be a disaster. <laughs> what's it like to play in them? <laughs> Nah, it's good to be fair. I think everyone's so confident. You know, mm. we've been in every situation. We've been down a goal. We've been winning. We've been drawing. You know, and it, I think it's just... Yeah, I think it's just confidence. Everyone has mm. it's high in confidence and I think that shows. I think that helps. And, you know, we have a great depth in our squad as well. No matter what 11 we put out, we're a very, very, very good side. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've talked about that a lot. We, both you and Vickers would be first choice at probably 20, all 24 League One clubs and we've got both of you at this, at this club. <laughs> Same mm-hmm. about a lot of other positions, couldn't we? It's 1-25, to 25, it's one of the best squads we've ever had as a Rotherham, Rotherham, Rotherham fan, so it's uh, mm. pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, so let's go back to the start of the run, because I'm interested, we talked about, I, mean, I briefly mentioned the Fiddler game, and I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but that was, that was where the run started. Does it feel at the time like that was a t- not a turning point because it's so early on in the season, but it sort of maybe galvanised you all together? Think, well, we don't want another day like that. Yeah, I'd say so. It was so, uh, yeah, it was hard to take, but it was. I think it was, like I said, we turned into a positive, and we said because um, we believe in ourselves. You know, we have a good, good squad, uh, a very good team, and we know we're better than that, and we just had to show it. And then since since then, like you said, we've been uh, doing very well. Mm. Yeah, and they scored a belt with third goal, that free kick, which were just unstoppable. Yeah. Mm. It's like... That was a good, uh, yeah. If my corner does, I was, I'm a bit, you know, <laughs> I was a bit harsh on myself there. Uh, <laughs> do you ever but... concede a goal and give yourself a little bit of leeway, or do you blame yourself a lot? And you always internally for every goal, or you... nah, you, you always you always blame it. You always say you're going to save yeah. it, or you think you're going to save it. You find ways to try and. You know, stop it next time. Uh, hmm. So I think every keeper is the same. I think you have yeah. to. Uh, so hmm. yeah, I say I'm, you always blame yourself, but you're not blame not towards others. If you know hmm. what I mean. But internally, yeah, you do. Hmm. Um, and the final I think I have is you're such a fan favorite, but you haven't got a song yet, and I am putting you on the spot. <laughs> But would you like somebody to think of a song for you? And do you have any ideas of a song that you would like to have for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> the hat is a, it's unbelievable, the hat. I'm very happy about the hat. But um, I haven't thought about that, actually. I don't know. <laughs> I should, I should let you know before, to be honest. This, this is a thinker, I think. Think one, isn't it? Yeah, it is a, it is a thinker, yeah. I mean, if that okay. day comes, it's, it's very fun. But it's, yeah, I can't. Can't really think of anything, or you know, it's hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, make ben, How can you answer that? Uh, well, I'm just, <laughs> just making a bit fun, mate. Do you want to chill out? Or? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back to asking Sorry. serious questions if you want. <laughs> No, I'm right. Uh, you you saw I got to work at that, don't you? Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, final one for me before I these two jump in. And I, I hope you're going to give us the right answer. Are we going to go up this season, Victor? Is this, are, we going, are we going straight back up? Yeah, well, that's that's what we, you know, that's a goal. Are we working towards that goal? And then if we keep doing what we're doing, mm. don't see any point, why not? We just have to uh, take every game at mm. the time, one game at a time. Sorry, and then uh, go from there. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, Ben. You've been very quiet. Do you have any questions you'd like to have, Victor? Because you've barely said a word. No, I ain't got any. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been watching. I've just been watching. I, I, I mean, you asked them all. I've just been watching. And just <laughs> yeah, I've just been watching. No, I ain't got any questions. Okay. I have a question on Ben's behalf, and again a random one. Ben is a budding professional sportsman. He wants to be an NFL uh, winger. No winger, wide receiver, winger. Wide receiver, wing. It's not wing. 
if you're asking for any advice to a sports a kid coming through any system, what advice would you give any youngsters out there? Yeah, oh, that's, that's my fun. question. That's my question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'd say fun is a to have fun is, is the most or was the most important thing for me. You know, it's all about work hard, but you want to work hard because you're having fun. Mm. Especially when you're at, at a young age. Because yeah. I once, I think I was 12 years old or 11, and I didn't want to go train. And my dad told me, okay, we're not going training then. And he I went off football for two months, I think. And no pressure whatsoever. And then dad just said, well, I said to my dad, I want to go back playing. Um, and he said, okay, I won't drive you. I had to take the bus to go to <laughs> training because I wanted it. And not because he was just there, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So I think that's that's an important thing, just to have fun. Yeah. Are you into any sport, any of the sports, Victor? I don't know what sport, other sports are big in Sweden. <laughs> I've done loads, mate. Oh, <laughs> my parents hate me. I think they were driving me full time. <laughs> uh, I played the uh, handball when I was younger. Okay. I played the uh, table tennis for a bit. Um, uh, played tennis. I have played, it's called floorball. It's like ice hockey, but on land. And it's just, no, nah, it's not like ice hockey. That's a lie. Um, it is, yeah. I don't know how to explain it. It's big in Scandinavia, in like uh, Czech. Uh, mm. But yeah, it's like a plastic mm. club, plastic ball, two nets, five people on the pitch, and then you just shoot the ball in the net. Uh, <laughs> simple as that. <laughs> yeah, what more have I done? Um, Oh, I've done oh, that was just a few. I've done loads. It was like training Monday. So I had football training Monday afternoon between four and six. Went there and then my handball training started from six to eight. So I had to leave football half five to get a handball practice and then <laughs> do that after. And then just it was like that the whole week. And then my dad and mom had enough and said, You have to choose now. <laughs> We're not doing this anymore. So I stuck with football. Brilliant. Most patient parents in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be fair, credit to them. Because I was, uh, oh, I was everywhere when I was a kid, mate. I was everywhere. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Mick, anything else? No, not for me. I've uh, I've made a big enough fool of myself already, mate. I'm not going. Uh, I'm not falling <laughs> for that one again. <laughs> we'll start thinking of a question, and next week you'll thought of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't if I remember any, I'll tweet you. <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Danny, any, anything else? Um, I've got one. You know how strikers normally have like a memorable goal that they've scored? Do you have like a memorable save that you've pulled off? Uh, remember, I think Coventry last season, I think the first mm. two minutes, I think that's probably that's one it. of my best ones. Yeah. Uh, so that's, I'd mm. say that one. Mm. That was a great save. And we haven't touched mm. on that yeah, week, that crazy week <laughs> from, last, from last season, have we? Uh, oh, no. No. <laughs> Let's consign that to history. I hope it doesn't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for doing this, Victor. This has been amazing. We really appreciate you taking your time out to talk to us for idiots. Uh, but no, of course. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> had a great time. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, and hopefully excellent. we'll see you on Boxing Day all being well. We'll all be there. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just providing. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. nice. That's amazing. Thank you very much. No, cheers. Thank you very much, boys. Appreciate that. No worries. Legend. Very fun. 